hey guys and welcome back to my youtube channel my name is esther and if you're new here i do sewing and diy videos and as you guys know we hit 1k subscribers i think last or uh, two weeks ago and i promise to run a giveaway contest yes it's still coming on but i don't want to be talking about the details here because i want to make this intro as short as possible so i would make a separate video talking about all the details and everything you have to know about the giveaway so yeah let's move into today's video well, in today's video we're going to make a crop top yes a crop top and here is my inspiration i saw it on pinterest as usual and i saved it in my mood board yes i always save my project or whatever i want to sew i have a mood board for it so i saved it there and today is the day we're going to create it so if you're happy to create this top with me then let's get right into today's video in this video i already made the bus cycle you get that by measuring from the widest part of your bust to the under bust and then use that as your bust radius. Make a straight line in the center of the circle. At the under bust, measure half of an inch on both sides of the dart and join it to the bust point and also the lower side of the dart. And then at the side, I came in half of an inch and then I cut it out. And then at the center front, I didn't want any gaping, so I took quarter of an inch on both sides of the center line. And then I went in half of an inch at the armhole. Next, I'll close the center front contour. I'm doing this at the center front because I don't want any gaping issues when i'm done sewing my top once that was done i shaped the ruching part of the front i started on the center line at the center front and shape it like you see it so that is exactly what i'm doing i'm shaping it like i see on the top so once you're satisfied with it cut it out and then i'm cutting that part because i want to ease up the that that i closed at the center front so that that is now at the opening so I cut it out and at the waistline i came up one and a half inch and i will cut that out because the top is like a crop top so if you want to maintain the length you can maintain that length but or you can make it even shorter and then i close the that I would add allowance to the curvy part and the waistline. The side already has allowance and the center would be cut on fold. And I'll duplicate this part of the bust. So what we're going to do next to this one is to slash and spread. We're going to use the slash and spread methods to get the fullness around that part of the top. So slash through. There is no special measurement. Just make some lines and slash through it but make sure you have a line at the center to be able to line up your patterns so just do like i'm doing on your paper on your new paper remember to put in the line as you can see on the paper and i don't want a lot of ruching so i didn't spread it so much but you can put as much ruching or goddess as you want when you're satisfied just um trace it and then add allowance <laughs> say that on the pattern that i use i already put allowance on the sides so i usually don't put allowance when i'm putting allowance on the other sides that's needed so if your pattern doesn't have allowance already then you can add allowance to the sides so 
now that it's done, all I have to do now is to cut it out. And that is it. So now moving on to the back pattern, as we always do, make a straight line through the old dart and then at the new line mark the center and then make a new dart and then at the side half inch as usual and then at the armhole as well I took away the one and a half inch that I reduced at the waistline to make the top cropped. So you can come up a bit higher or still maintain this length if you want, as I already said. This was a mistake, don't do it. So I erased it and then I have to match the armhole of the front to the back. So that is what I did. And now you can draw your back depth so that is it for the back and now you can add allowance to the back pattern and also remember to add a zip extension so with the sleeve pattern also what i have to do i'm going to use the slash and spread method and uh, i'm going to increase the length of the sleeve to give you that kind of you know flowy flowy effect or exaggerated effect so what i'm doing is making the lines and then later on i'll slash through them just like we did for the front area to add ruching that's the same thing and i forgot to make a line in the center a horizontal line so um that's what i'm going to do now to be able to align the sleeve straight on the new paper so as you can see i also made a straight line on the other paper just to help me align those slashed papers and i added four inches more to the length of the sleeve and also allowance for the elastic band at the wrist So here's the fabric I'll be using. It's a poplin cotton fabric. So lay all your patterns on your fabric and cut them. I'll be cutting four of these pieces. And then this is the lower side of the top and it's on fold. So you can see that it's placed where the fold is. So I'll be cutting two of these and I would have to add allowance to these sides. And also for the back, I'll be cutting four. And I'll be adding a zip allowance to this side and also allowance to the other sides. And then cut two of the sleeve pattern. So cut four of this one that I'm cutting now. You need four of that. two of the lower side of the top like the yoke and then four of the back pieces and also two of your sleeve pieces and then the straps so what i'm going to do next is to put two of the ruching part together and stitch it and at the lower side i'll do the basting stitches so do that too both pieces and for the basting stitch tune your machine to the longest stitch
so once that is done i would trim down the allowance and snip it because it's a curvy side so when you snip it it gives it that kind of ease so when you flip it out it's nice so there is something with the cups i want to change so it's the basting stitches i forgot that i had two of the lower sides these ones i have two so there is no need for me to make the basting stitches on both um sides so i will take them all out and put them together and then do the basting stitch stitches on both at once so yeah i will do that it's not a it's not a mistake but it's better to do it this way than i mean it's better to do it the other way around than this so way. once that is done i'll go ahead and make the ruching and if you know if you want to know it's enough take your yoke part of the top and try to match it with the curve over there and then for this type of joining it's a bit tricky so what i do is to mark the allowance a little bit over there on both sides and then you will have like a what do you call it it would cross over so at the cross over like that where it's like an x put the end of the that part on the line and not exactly at where the point is put it at where the allowance begins like that and also same as the other one if you put it exactly at the center you're gonna have a really hard time and it wouldn't come out come out well so maybe i'm not explaining it well but i guess the video is clear enough so please do it like this so that your life will be easy so pin it up try to align it with the curvy area once that is done take the other yoke or the other lower piece of the top and pin it also so now you've sandwiched the bust area in between the two yokes or the two lower sides that is why uh you don't need to do the basting stitches separately because it doesn't really help so once that's done take it to the machine and stitch it So once that is done, trim down the allowance to reduce bulkiness around that area as I always do. And what I'm going to do next is to make the casing for the strap. So make a channel the size of your strap and and what okay so after sewing we'll know what to do next so make the channel and after that use your seam ripper to make an opening at the center front to enable you to be able to pass your straps through the hole so i'm doing this with the help of the bobby pin but you can use whatever you are comfortable with so once you're done pin that end so that it doesn't come out so what i'm going to do now is to hem the waist area so i'll sandwich everything in the middle and stitch it and then trim the allowance as usual and then turn it inside out I did it this way because I didn't want any stitching or turn over and stitch at the waistline. 
So once that is done, we move to the back and then join the stitch the upper and the lower side like that and then iron it flat. So what we're going to do now is to join the side seams together, the front and the back piece, we're putting them together. So stitch whatever allowance you left there. What I'm going to do next is to stitch the zip. So fold in your zip allowance and stitch in your zip. Now moving on to the sleeve, what I'm going to do is to join the side seam of the sleeve and then knitting or finish the raw edge and make a channel for the elastic band at the wrist. So cut, a, cut an elastic band which is comfortable around your wrist and then push it through the channel that you made. So stitch it and close the opening. So what we'll do that to both sleeves and then now attach the armhole to the attach both attach the sleeve to the armhole of the top and stitch it. So once that is done, now we have to attach the elastic band to the rest of the armhole of the sleeve. So cut an elastic band, which once you stretch it, would it would be the same length as the armhole and stitch it to that side. <laughs> stretch it whilst you sew it. So this is how it's looking now and our top is done and we are ready or I am ready to rock it. If you are done with yours, then you can also rock it with me. Um.